Well, hey everybody, Sergeant Slingshot here. As promised, today's video, <clears throat> the cheapest slingshot you could ever get, of course, is to make your own. Cheapest way you'll ever be ever get out. We're out here in the woods around the back side of my house, and I've got woods over there, over there, there's my barn, there's my car, and some junk piled up and around. Woods over there, so there's my house. I done a little outing beforehand because um, it's been wet and cold around here. Didn't want to take a whole lot of time being out in the brush and in the wind and stuff. But right on this little wild cherry tree is as about a perfect a fork as you're gonna find. Good symmetrical, even fork. And we're gonna go ahead and take him. <clears throat> and what I use most of the time is this. This is a cheap Walmart brand Ozark Trail foldable saw. I bought it just because I didn't have a foldable saw. Didn't know how good it would be. Turns out it's actually really good. I've used it already to take some forks. Um, Either that or a good pair of hedge clippers, which I don't have uh, with me. So we're going to use this and we'll be back after we've taken it off. So there's the fork cut off the tree. And we're going to take these little bits off here, little limbs sticking off. And we'll cut it to fit our hand. I'm going to try to film this. I don't know how well. It'll work out, but I am gonna try. So, sitting in my car, I don't know if you can hear the wind or not, but it is blowing. So, we'll just take these off real quick. And I am not going to be drying this fork out, uh, at least not for this video. Um, I am a natural dryer when it comes to my forks. I want it to be uh, as long and slow a process as nature allows. So, but anyway, there's the fork all trimmed up. Um, I personally, you know, I shoot uh, primarily sideways. And this fork already having a canted handle. See right there with the shape of the fork with the handle canted up that fits my hand great so what we'll do is go ahead now and try and figure out where we're going to cut the forks and uh, what you a general rule of thumb for cutting the forks is wherever you hold which for me would be about right there at that knot you want to go about a half inch above that on either side so that's going to be roughly right in that area right in there so about a half inch there above that knot try to make a mark of sorts with my thumbnail I don't know if you can see that little scratch I made or not the lights terrible and I am NOT a professional camera operator but anyway there's the fork we're going to get it trimmed up. Now, I cut my forks flat. I cut them flush. I don't cut them with the tips canted like they are now. Um, <clears throat> you can experiment and see which way you'd rather do it, but that's just, that's not how I personally do it. I like having a flat, level shooting surface. So, be back in a bit. Alright, guys, we're back. <clears throat> and fork tips have been cut off flat instead of canted. And as you can see, I've already rounded that one fork tip off. But all you need to do that with is pocket knife. And you just at an angle go around the tip of the fork. And round it off. And what that does is it keeps the bands in as good a shape as they can be. Where you don't have any sharp edges that are gonna hurt the bands when you draw them back over the top of the frame. Side a little bit more. Get this 
other side a little bit. And there we go, four tips are rounded. Now then, you don't have to do this, but if you want to put grooves in the fork tips, take that same pocket knife. You don't need to groove it all the way around. Same pocket knife. Make a cut there, like so. And then, being very careful, come up towards the cut that you've made. back in, cut out any excess, there you've got a groove, over here same thing, and those are not even at all whatsoever, that was my bad, but anyway grooves in the frame for the bands to sit in. Now, <clears throat> for the band making part. This is as cheap as you're possibly going to get. These are number 32 and number 64 rubber bands. Alright, just get them. First, you may want to look over them, check them for any nicks or tears. You don't want something flying back in your face. Then just clip them. Doesn't matter where you cut them because they're going to be the same length. And then you're going to need four of the number 32s, two to tie to the frame and two to tie the pouch on. So just get those, line them up, give them a snip. There you go. Now then for the pouch, this is just a piece of scrap leather, nothing special. What you want to do is cut kind of a football shape out of the pouch. Um, I hadn't pre-drawn this or anything. I'm just cutting it out by hand. There's kind of the rough shape. You can shape it up a little bit more toward the ends if you want to. Get that end off there to kind of even them up. Now to make the holes in the pouch, if you do not have one of these laying around, you can use a knife. Um, or a pair of scissors, just be very careful. I have a hole punch, so I am going to use it. Just quick, fast, and easy. If you don't have a hole punch, buy one. They're cheap, you know, $15, $20, you can get a hole punch. Um, you'll use them a lot more than what you think. You'll use them for making more than just pouch holes for a slingshot, guaranteed. Okay, so now then, to attach the bands to the pouch, just take your rubber band, fold it in half on the end, and stick it through. I did that backwards, sorry. Going from the inside of the pouch, the fuzzy side, all right. Fold and go in like that, and then bring yourself back around. And there you go. You can come out a little bit further, just to make it easier to tie on. Pull out about I a half to a full inch of the rubber band, fold it down on itself, bring it back over to you. Now then you're ready to tie. Take one of your smaller ones, hold it down with your thumb, 
one rat. Two rats. Three wraps. And then if you don't have one of these, you can use a piece of string. But these are actually tools made for this. Just get a piece of string. It will do the exact same thing. Lay it on top of the tie that you have started. It's just kind of, it's kind of like wrap and tuck for the frame, actually, which you'll see in a minute. And do a couple of wraps. Make sure it's tight. And then stick this tag end back through the end of the loop. Pull it up above the other tag end. And then that just pulls that back through. Once you have that pulled back through, take your scissors, get underneath the band, give it a snip. And the excess, you can just pull back through. But there is one side, it's not pretty, but it is effective. I'll guarantee you that, it is effective. The tag ends, take and snip them off. And there you go. Okay. So that's one side done. And the other side, same way. Pull through. Fold it over. And back onto itself. Get your rubber band. And one, two, and number three. put my little tie tool. This happens all the time. I lose it constantly. One day I will attach it permanently to my body. But until such time as that, I have lost it. Alright, found the tool. So as we did before, Lay it on top, give it a couple of wraps, one, two, bring it back around, run that in through. through take your scissors give it a snip pull that tag end out and trim the others like we did before like I said it's not pretty but it is functional and it'll get you shooting. So there's that and there is the pouch with the bands attached ready to go. So now then we go to our frame that we've made. Lay the band over that groove we made. And this is a style an attachment style that most everybody uses called wrap and tuck. So 
And what that means is you wrap 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 get about four good wraps on there make sure the band is centered and then to tuck it just take your thumb Do a couple of wraps around the tip of your thumb. Bring it back to yourself. Catch it with your thumb tip. And boom. It just tucks itself right there under the bands. As you can see, don't mind the dog. She's crazy. Shut it! And there you go. Wrapped and tucked. The other side, the same way. Right on the other side, same way. Hold it down. Take your rubber band. And wrap, 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 and finger in place, put a couple of wraps on there. Tuck it underneath, and if you want to, you can get the excess and just kind of pull it down a little bit, but there you go. Slingshot made, and ready to be shot. You record them, sir? Sorry, I have to ask my camera woman if she's recording. Okay, so can we hit anything with it? Let's find out. Excuse my porch. It is currently my workshop, but can you hit anything with it? That's the next question. That's the whole point of this is being able to shoot something. So we want to take a shot on that Sprite bottle down there on the end. And for ammo, we're using... BBs, like you're shooting a BB gun, 17 caliber BBs. So we just cut this off the tree, rounded the tips, made the bands, made the pouch. Let's see if we can hit something. It's that easy, guys. <laughs> 